Just want to go through a little bit of like the mechanics of how we're supposed to be breathing. If we think that stress breathing, if someone's stressed, what do they look like when they're breathing? They don't look chilled and relaxed, they're stressed. What does their breathing look like? Short, heavy. Well. Short, heavy. Oh, the shoulders come up every time. Shoulders. So it's vertical. Make sense? Vertical. It's mouth. I'm stressed. And um, it's shallow because the rib, we're lifting the rib cage from the top. So we're not actually filling the lungs from low down. Better, more efficient breathing is the opposite of all those things. So rather than vertical, we're looking at breathing horizontally. Rather than shallow and upper chest, we're looking at breathing from low down with the diaphragm. And rather than it being fast, we're looking at it being slower. Slower is more efficient. And rather than being um, from the mouth, we breathe through the nose. So like we just think about reversing all of those things. Okay? The nose provides more resistance about 50% more resistance than mouth breathing does. But that resistance gives the diaphragm something to pull against and helps to slow your breathing down a bit. At the start, when you're first trying to do it, it might feel a bit harder, you're like, Jack, this is harder, this is even better. It feels harder because you're just not used to it yet. You have to allow yourself some time, a few weeks to adapt to that. We often say like six to 12 weeks. But remember, when we're, this is a lot, day-to-day breathing and your warm-ups and your cool-down. When we start to breathe, when we start to do some hard training, some high intensity stuff, I'm going to talk about how we just want to change our breathing then. Okay, but I just want to finish this little section. Okay? Um, so, I want you to put, if you put one hand on your chest, and one hand below your sternum, in between where your ribs meet. And I want you to um, just take a few breaths, in and out through the nose. Something went wrong. <laughs> Supposed to, we're not running around, so just breathe in and out through the nose, but breathe quietly. And if you feel your shoulders moving and your upper chest moving and that upper hand moving, relax your shoulders, relax your neck, roll them out if that helps, and try and make the movement come from where the bottom hand is. Good. Okay. And then just that, um, what we talked about in terms of posture affecting breathing and whether we sat down, we're going to turn sideways and see. I want us now to just go into like a poor slumped position. So if actually just squat down a little bit so as if we were like in a, in a chair a little bit. But round your back, let your shoulders round forward. And then look, but look forward. And then breathe in now. And in order for you to breathe, you're probably going to feel the upper hand moving more. Because, of, stand back up, because in order for you to breathe from low down with your diaphragm, we have to create space for the ribs to move. When I just sit in a poor position, my body weight is resting on my ribs, restricting my ribs from moving. My ribs can't move, I don't create the space for the diaphragm to move. The brain doesn't go, oh, well, we'll just let you die, Jacko. It goes, well, I'll keep you alive and we'll just breathe from up here. So the body does a great job at adapting to whatever situation and environment we put it in. And it's keeping you alive and doing a great job of that. We just want to go, what do we know about what's most efficient? And try to facilitate that on a daily basis. Okay? So, doing the opposite of those things. Think about, hand on the upper chest, one lower down. Think about creating a long spine through your neck. So the top of my head, and think about trying to push it towards the ceiling. The tongue goes to the roof of the mouth. The same starting point, if you make that noise, just make that noise. Where you put it, to start that, at the top, behind the front teeth, want it to be resting in that position. So it's at the top of the palate. Now, take a few breaths with that good, long posture, tongue to the roof of the mouth, behind the front teeth. The airway might feel a bit easier and a bit clearer, give me a nod if it does. So that air might even feel a bit cooler, because it's freer coming through. And then your bottom hand should be moving more. Okay, and then it should be quiet, we shouldn't be able to hear each other. And ideally, you should be able to hear yourself. 
Well, but we'll do some stuff that's going to help clear it more in, in, a, in a second. The other thing I want you to do is, so breathing from lower down while I'm higher up is like step one, but it's, that's like baby steps. We actually want to be thinking not about vertical breathing, horizontal. The diaphragm is your number one breathing muscle. If your diaphragm is functioning better and you're using it better and you're strengthening it with some of the exercises we're going to do, it becomes more efficient in doing it. The more efficient your breathing is, the less energy you waste on breathing, and the less blood you need to send there so you can send it to the legs and everything that's going to be you need it for your fighting. That makes sense. But the diaphragm can't move unless the ribs are moving. So the diaphragm is like a dome. It's actually two hemispheres, but just this, to keep it simple, think of it as like a dome shape. When I breathe in, it moves down from the bottom portion of the ribs, moves down and flattens out. In all directions, I'm three dimensional. It doesn't just push forward. Yeah, so it's coming down and flattening out when I breathe in. That's it contracting. On an exhale, it goes back up to that resting position. But only if my ribs are coming back in together. If my ribs are flared out, sticking out of my t-shirt if I'm stuck in extension, then the ribs are pulling tension on the diaphragm. That affects like your lower back and your hips and your shoulders and everything. Yeah? Um, so, I want you to take your fingers, get acquainted with your, I want you to find your two lowest ribs. Oh. Oh. Find, <laughs> find, find your ribs on each side. <laughs> Run your finger down the line so you're aware. And they're going to be, create an angle here. The angle that they made. <laughs> the angle that they make with your sternum. That's, that's, listen. The angle that makes with your sternum is called the infrasternal angle. We want that, as I breathe in, to widen. So I get to move laterally as that angle opens up. Because that gives a space for the diaphragm to move down. But then my exhale is just as important as the inhale. That needs to come back together and flatten down towards the pelvis. And then the diaphragm can go back to its resting position. If your ribs aren't moving, it's very difficult for your diaphragm to move. If your mouth breathing, I'll second, if your mouth breathing, it's very difficult for you to use your diaphragm because the body doesn't want to breathe from low down when it's in that stressed state of mouth breathing. Okay? Just a question, do you want to breathe heavy or light? Oh, it's at the moment light. No. Yeah? But then we're going to some higher stuff, okay? So, what can help is just literally rub where those ribs are on each line. You have a lot of receptors in the skin. By you touching them, it's like when you're telling the brain, this is where we want to move. So those lower ribs. I want you to go around the back as well. Because your three dimensions, when you breathe in, Everything around here wants to expand. Okay? Rest your, rest your hands down. Who would recommend like massaging the area between rib, the ribs anyway? It can be, it can be yeah. To, can, we're going to do some, a few things to help release it. Okay? So, just feel, that, um, feel the fact that when you're now not touching it, you can just sense where you were touching. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can feel it. Yeah. Now, when you breathe in through the nose, I want you to think about that area expanding on the way in. Quietly, and then on the way out, quietly, the ribs coming back together. So quiet in, quiet out, but imagine these ribs are actually moving. Okay? Put your hands on either side of them and provide a little bit of resistance. Not hard, just a little bit. When I breathe in, I want to think about my hands. I'm pushing my hands out with my ribs. And as I breathe out, I'm pulling the ribs back together. Try to stimulate the air, we get used to it, and then I want you to just relax your arms down, take a few breaths, 
now quietly, but how well can you feel, connect to what is moving in your body? Can you feel that movement from the ribs coming lower down? Expanding outward, laterally, but in all directions? And do your shoulders should feel more relaxed because we're not using the shoulders to breathe at rest? Okay? To feel the diaphragm contract, so the diaphragm contracts on inhales. To feel a strong contraction, if I asked you to, Christian again, got big biceps, if I asked him to tense his bicep, we would all know how to tense our bicep. Neurally, you have a connection for your brain to your bicep, something you've tensed before. If I ask you to tense your diaphragm, contract it, what do you do? You probably tense your abs, because you're not sure where. On a, for your ribs to move out on an inhale so the diaphragm can contract and move down, we need the abs to be relaxed, to allow the movement. If I tense my abs, it's keeping the ribs down and in. So I need to be able to relax my, my abdominal muscles to allow the diaphragm to move on inhales. So feel this contraction, we're going to do what we call a blocked inhalation, which is you're going to hold the breath, this will be our first breath hold of the day, we're going to do some stronger ones there. First breath hold of the day. All the breath holds the oxygen advantage are done after a normal exhale. So I do, I breathe in through the nose normally. I breathe out through the nose normally. And then I would start my breath hold. So it's not getting ready for a breath hold. It's just normal in. I promise you, if someone will do it straight away now. Normal in, normal out. I'll pinch the nose as I'm holding the breath, and I'm going to try to breathe in. And I'm going to feel the diaphragm trying to, like literally, underneath where those ribs are, like, feel like it's trying to pop out. So if I show you, I'll try and overdo it so you can see. I go, breathe in normally. Out. Pinch those. I'll try to breathe in. Breathe in. I can feel it moving. Okay, have a go. Try a couple of reps. I want you to feel a strong contraction deep inside. Normal breath in. Going without pinch nose. As you hold the breath, try to breathe in, and you should feel underneath where those ribs are, deep down, something trying to get out. Give me a nod if you can feel it. That's your diaphragm. Huh? What is it? That's your diaphragm. What is it? It's a muscle. muscle. Did you breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Jacko. We do breathing. <laughs> Biology was last week. I'll, I'll tell you about that. It's like, no, no, it's good. It's like basically the. Is my ears because they feel like they're a bit pop. Letting them pop is fine, and that you'll, when we do some strong breath holds, you're probably going to want to just let them pop. Should you have to at the same time? I feel like my no, I, want, I, want you to try, I want you to try and relax. Yeah, so that's a common, it's a common thing, it's a good question. Often we'll get like a bit disconnected and we'll be like tensing the abs and sucking in when we're inhaling, whereas we need to be relaxed. So if you're doing it correctly, you shouldn't feel your abs contract at all. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's, it, you might. It's more internal. It's, it's internal, yeah. yeah. Your abs are more superficial on the outside. It might feel to you a little bit like your abs. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm trying to work out. But if you do a strong yeah. exhale, that's your abs. Yeah. You'll feel that. <laughs> okay, question? <laughs> Perfect. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Great question. What's your name again? Malachi. Malachi. Asked, um, can, so if the diaphragm is a muscle, you can train it like any other muscle, though. Correct. Breathing from your nose day to day means you're always training it because you're using it. And the breathing through the nose provides 50% more resistance than the mouth. When you breathe with the mouth, you're actually like making your diaphragm weaker because you're not using it. Like anyone ever injured, like a muscle uh, injured, have uh, broken a bone, and you get put in a cast. You take it out of the cast for six weeks, you've got like the spindliest alarm. Yeah? yeah. The same if you're not using the diaphragm, it's a muscle; it, it will atrophy as well. So breathing through the nose is really important. We'll do some stuff at the end where we can make our breathing through the nose harder by breathing through only through one nostril. That really trains your diaphragm, and you'll feel the strength of it building up. Yeah, we're, we're going to do that at the end. But what you want, but what I, what I always recommend with people first is just get comfortable with breathing through your nose in your training as a starting point before you want to try and make it even harder. Yeah, that makes sense.